I don't think the Fourteenth Amendment is in play here. I mean, they talk about that, but I don't think it can happen uh, in this round. And uh, it would take some while to implement it if if they decided to try to do it. So I, I don't think it is going to work by June first. But let me make a, another point. Uh, the, the fact is, the Republican leader comes to the White House and says, "We demand you do what we insist on, or we're going to default on the federal debt." Well, look, the fact is. Our fiscal policy, Republican and Democratic fiscal policy, is way out of balance. It is way unsustainable. There does need to be budget cuts. There does need to be some tax increases. And we need to put this thing back uh, in order. And uh, that ought not be a, a part of the threat of defaulting on the federal debt. That's money that we already owe. We've spent that money. So now I think Republicans and Democrats have a responsibility to decide that we're going to extend the debt limit and then have serious thoughtful budget negotiations to finally figure out how on earth do we get uh, uh, this issue dealt with of less spending, and we need to have less spending, and also increased taxes. And as you mentioned, this is something that both parties have contributed to over the years to get to this point then. So then what are the expectations then for what can happen in order to avert a debt, uh, in order to avert uh, defaulting on, as you mentioned, this spending that, that's already happened? Well, you're right about both parties. I mean, the fact is both political parties own this problem. In fact, just during the presidency of Donald Trump, the fact is he increased the federal debt with the Republican Congress by almost a third, $8 trillion. So this is not just a Democratic issue. It's Democrats and Republicans. And I, I just really believe that uh, there needs now to be some kind of approach in which uh, the American people say to their representatives in Congress, you've got to fix this. Now, let me just make one other point, if I might. We have a different kind of Congress than we've had in the past. We've got, uh, you know, a handful of uh, people in the Senate who are not somewhere in the middle. They're way off on the right. We've got 40 people in the Freedom Caucus in the House, some of whom think defaulting on that would be probably be a pretty good thing. I mean, that's unbelievable. I think it's reckless. I think it's dangerous. And I don't know what's going to happen at the meeting this afternoon it occurs between just uh, the Speaker of the House and also the President. This will be a very important meeting, but uh, both of them need to understand, even as we fix this issue of, uh, of dealing with the extending the debt limit, and I hope we do because to, to, to default on the debt would be devastating for our country. Even as we do that, our fiscal policy is unsustainable, and both this President and this Speaker of the House and others need to resolve it. So what do you think is the most likely scenario then at this point? Uh, somehow, I think they need to find some way to reach some agreement on portions of uh, the recommendations that have come from both the White House and also the House of Representatives. I think uh, um, leader, Republican Leader McConnell is sort of staying off to the side on this. So it's just the president, the House of Representatives. So I, I, I hope my hope is that they will find a way to to at least take some of these positions, not not all that many, but and then extend the debt limit, then come back and really do a significant issue. You know, the, those that say if if we don't get what we demand, I'm talking about the Republicans in the House, if we don't get what we demand, we will hurt ourselves because the fact is everybody will, everybody will be badly hurt. So it's just a stupid position to be saying we demand this or we won't pay America's bills, we won't pay our debts. That makes no sense at all. And Republicans and Democrats need to understand that and need to find a way to help fix this. And for other, other countries sort of, you know, looking in, wondering, you know, why should we care? I mean, when we look at Mark Zandi, the chief economist at Moody's Analytics, saying no corner of the global economy will be spared if the U.S. government defaulted and the crisis weren't resolved quickly. When you think of the repercussions yeah. and what this means for, for U.S. standing, not to mention who we trade and do business with, what should some of these CEOs who are also watching this be thinking right now? Oh, I hope all of those CEOs and others call in and say, look, this needs to get fixed. But the, the fact is the American dollar is the international currency. This will have a profound impact on that if America is seen as a country that has decided we won't pay our bills. We won't, we won't pay the bills that we've already uh, you know, encompassed and we've spent that money. Uh, we've got all these bonds out there. You know, Other countries have purchased uh, these bonds. We need uh, to tell... Uh, uh, the rest of the world that they can count on the American dollar. And even as I say that, I say, again, the, our fiscal policy is unsustainable in the long term and it needs to be fixed. But don't fix it by deciding you're going to threaten to default on, the, on America's debts. That makes no sense at all. 
And as you mentioned, other timelines they, they can use to, to solve some of these, these fiscal problems, you know, with, with budget talks as well. So if you had a message for both sides today, when you think about some of the major sticking points that both sides still do have, what would you tell them? Well, I, I just find a way to, to convince everyone that as they extend the debt, if they can find the votes to extend the debt limit, that there are guarantees that they will, in a, a thoughtful budget process, figure out how we deal with this unsustainable fiscal policy. And, uh, you know, I, there needs to be promises of how you deal with that on both the spending and the taxing side. I hope they would reach so, th those approaches and they can say that to uh, Republicans and Democrats in the Congress. Uh, we'll see. I, you know, this, this is detrimental. It's already very detrimental to our country to 24-7 for weeks be talking about the fact that America might default. That is already detrimental, detrimental to our country. I hope we get to a point very quickly here before June 1st that we can solve this and just so, decide we're going to extend the debt limit and then fix the other unsustainable uh, fiscal policy issues. Certainly hope so. We do appreciate you joining us this morning. Thank you for your time. Former Senator for North Dakota, no. Byron Dorgan, thanks so much.